Hello, my name is Simon Cotswold, I'm an equine vet and this is the first in a series of videos talking about uh, common veterinary complaints that horses experience. We're going to start very topically the way the weather is with mud rash um, or mud fever or passing dermatitis as it's also known. It's also the same thing that causes rain scald that, that happens more on horses backs but as I say talking about passing dermatitis mainly mud rash, mud fever this is something that happens very commonly this time of year obviously because of the wet weather horses are going out in the fields a lot and particularly if, if they're stood in and around the, the gateways uh, where the mud tends to accumulate where there's a lot of poaching caused by a lot of horses moving, moving backwards and forwards a lot of horse traffic uh, the mud can get quite deep and then as a horse is stood in that area for often many hours at a time certainly when they're waiting to come back in what happens is the skin the horse's skin particularly on the lower limb and particularly on white legs it seems um, get softened that allows bacteria to get into the skin and then cause the, the, the condition that is mud rash. So how do we recognize past and dermatitis? I'm, I'm sure many of you will have seen this condition or mud rash quite typically as in here around the the white hairs or the white parts of the leg and it's seen here as, as these scabs which are, are forming on the back of the pastern and even what can we, what we can do is we can pull scabs off where we're left with these quite typical paintbrush lesions where we have hairs attached to scabs as they come off and this is quite a quite a good example of of the sort of thing that we see in these sorts, sorts of cases often you can see bit of loss of hair and the hair's quite or the skin's quite red around there and, and this is quite a typical like I say past and dermatitis or mud rash. So we've seen what mud rash looks like on a horse and let's look at the conditions that cause it. So we were saying about its gateways, commonly these are areas, not exclusively, it can happen any part of the field but like I said before it's where there's a lot of horse traffic going through gateways and there tends to be a lot of mud hanging about there. So if we look down here, this isn't the muddiest area but obviously there is quite a lot of mud there. Horses are commonly stood around this area for a long period of time and they get that exposure to the, the mud and as it so, uh, softens the skin and allows the bacteria in. So what can we do to prevent it? Well, obviously the better draining the field is, certainly clay soils tend to hold moisture a lot more and that can cause problems. If you've got sandier soil, that does tend to drain a lot better. The other thing is getting these mats that you can put through gateways to help reduce the, the poaching effect of horses standing there. But either way, the more or the better draining the field, the more grass is on there, the less mud, that will certainly help with, uh, with mud rash. There's a lot of debate about treating mud rash and certainly as regards whether to wash the leg off and, and leave it wet or to, to leave the mud on and let it dry out and then scrape the mud off at a later date and, and I think either is reasonable. That what I would say is probably if you do wash the legs it's important to dry and certainly when you're treating mud rash it's always better to, to after you've used the antiseptic solution and normally we would use something like chlorhexidine is that you would always dry it very very well after even to the extent of using a hair dryer. We wash the mud off and then if we're actually treating the case after we've sponged a bit of warm water on we would then get a bit of antiseptic solution and then wash it in, work it into a lather in the areas where they normally get the problem so obviously the heel area is the main area and then after you've done that generally leave it on for about five to ten minutes to let it uh, soak in and, and kill the bacteria it is quite important this contact time that the, the antiseptic will actually be in contact with the bacteria and kill them then afterwards obviously we would normally leave this for five to ten minutes but then rinse it off again with clean water ideally, warm is better, obviously your horse is more likely to cooperate with it so give it a good rinse off as best you can and then a really important part is is really drying the leg afterwards so once you've given it a good uh, a good wash off even getting a towel, some people even use hair dryers and give it a good drying afterwards so almost spend as long drying the legs as, as you did actually washing them in the first place And again, I'd probably do a lot longer than this if, if I was treating this, uh, this problem. So the next thing then is what do you do in the stable? Often we would put things like flamazine, which is a, a 
sulfadiazine cream on. There are others available, some with triclose on as well, that you can actually put on the leg and, and act as an antibacterial longer term. Then often bandaging the legs afterwards is a good idea. Some people even use things like cling film, which is particularly useful if you get uh, scabs, which, which are difficult to get off. And certainly after you've put the, the dressings on, uh, sorry, by the, by the dressings, I mean the creams. Once you put those creams on, wrapping them in cling film or a bandage is often helpful to help reduce those scabs or, or to help make it easy to pick them off. Then, like I said, drying them again is, is really, really important. There are also other things to put onto the legs when you have a, a horse that's, that has to keep going out in the field. And often one of the problems will be that the more they stay in, the more legs will swell and, and more of a problem it becomes. So getting them out is often not a bad idea. And some of these barrier creams are quite good. Um, the only thing is that you, you must try and make sure that you're not making the mud rash worse with, worse with that. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. hope you found it useful and, and do look out for future ones in, in the series. Uh, what I would say is if you do have any concerns about your horses, uh, always contact your veterinary surgeon for, for more advice. But most of all, just enjoy your horses.